Hello, my name is Kathleen Lee. I'm a database specialist solution architect at AWS. AWS Cloud provides the most flexible solutions to enable or enhance your data lake strategies. In this video, I will show you how to use AWS Database Migration Service to move your historical data from your Amazon RDS for Oracle database to Amazon S3 data lake. I will also show you how to use Azina Federated Query to join OLTP data in RDS Oracle database and historical data stored in S3 bucket. Let's start it. Now let me give you an architecture and a solution overview. For OLTP database, we want to just store most recent data. For instance, one year data. For data older than one year, we want to move to S3 data lake to save the cost. We can use Amazon database migration service to migrate historical data to S3 data lake. Then we can run ad hoc query by using Amazon Athena a serverless interactive query engine on the data stored in S3. We also can use Amazon Azina federated query to join data stored in database and data in S3 to provide a single view of data for advanced data analysis and machine learning. Before the demo, let me give you the demo steps highlights. The first, we will set up an AWS Managed Oracle database as a source for AWS DMS. Set up Amazon S3 as a target for AWS DMS. Create AWS DMS endpoints and launch AWS DMS replication instance. Then create AWS DMS migration task. Use Amazon Azina for data validation. We will also use Amazon Azina federated query to join the table in Amazon RDS Oracle and the historical data in S3 Data Lake. Let's start the demo. The first step is to set up an AWS managed Oracle database at a source for AWS database migration service. I will also use SQL Developer to connect to the RDS Oracle database I already launched. AWS Database Migration Service document provides all the details about how to set up a prerequisite when using an AWS Managed Oracle database at a source, such as user account privileges required on an AWS Managed Oracle source. Also, when you want to create a database migration task, this task is a full load plus CDC or a CDC only task. You need to make sure your database is running in a catalog mode and our catalog retention period minimum set to 24 hours. You also need to set up a supplemental login appropriately. Configure a CDC task, either use a binary reader or use a log miner. All the details, please refer AWS database migration service document. Now let's move to set up Amazon S3 as a target for AWS DMS. Database migration service uses S3 bucket access point as a target. Unlike other endpoints, S3 doesn't require usernames and password. Access is handled via an IAM role, which can be assumed by DMS and allows get or put actions on S3 bucket. Amazon S3 bucket must be in the same region as the replication instance used to migrate data. Let's use Amazon S3 console to create S3 bucket. Click Create Bucket, give it a name. Notice the AWS region, I'm using US West 2. Make sure your AWS region for your S3 bucket is the same as your DMS replication instance. I'll leave all other fields at the default. Click Create Bucket. OK, successfully create bucket ORA to S3 demo. Now let's create an IAM role by using IAM console. Before that, let's create a policy. Click JSON format. I'll copy paste into my policy definition. Notice that in this policy, we defined the actions allowed on S3 bucket and the specified S3 bucket name 
we created the in previous step. Everything looks okay. Then click next. Click next view. Give the name ORA2I3. Then leave others as default. Click create policy. Now let's create a role. Since this role will be used by DMS, let's click DMS and then click on next permissions. Since we already created a policy, let's look for our policy. All right, we select this policy, click on next tags, next view, give her no name. We can continue call ra 2 s 3 and we create a role. Please take the note for the Amazon resource name for the role you created. We need this Amazon resource name at a later point at the time task creation. So now we are all set for all the prerequisites needed to use S3 as a target for DMS. Now move to the step create AWS DMS endpoint and launch AWS replication instance. We will create a source endpoint by using an RDS Oracle pre-launched, a target endpoint by using the S3 bucket created in the previous steps. We will also launch one DMS replication instance. Let's start with that. We'll use AWS DMS console to create two endpoints. On the create endpoint page, we'll first create a source endpoint. Since my source is a RDS DB instance, I'll check select RDS DB instance. From RDS instance list, I'll choose the one I created for this demo purpose. And for endpoint identifier, I'll give name call ORA to S3 demo. Make sure endpoint identifier is unique. For access to endpoint database, I'll choose provide access information manually. For the username, I choose one I created in a previous step. I'll use this user to for the migration task. Provide password. For the demo, I did not use the secure socket layer mode, but for your production migration, you should always use the secure socket layer mode. There are additional connection attributes which can be configured under endpoint settings. But for this demo purpose, I will use the default setting. And I use the KMS master key as the default key. DMS AWS uses AWS key manage the service encryption keys to encrypt the storage used by your replication instance and its endpoint connections. AWS DMS also use AWS KMS encryption keys to secure your target data at rest for Amazon S3. Let's click create endpoint. Let's create a target endpoint. On the create endpoint page, I choose target endpoint and provide unique endpoint identifier that's called ORA to S3 target. For the target engine, I'll choose Amazon S3 will provide Amazon resource name for IAM role assumed by DMS. Provide bucket name we created in the previous steps. For this demo, I also want to add one endpoint setting for S3 endpoint. I will use the wizard. Click Add New Setting. What I'm looking for is date format. For date format, a provide value is per quit. By default, file writing to the S3 as a CSV format. The reason why I changed to the per quit because my downstream consumer is Amazon Azina. Apache per quit is a columnar storage format. Instead of using a row level approach, columnar format is storing data by columns. It allows Azina to only query and process the required columns and ignore the rest, which is optimize the cost when using Amazon Azina. Now let's click Create Endpoints. We we'll use AWS DMS Console to create a, a replication instance. First, provide name for A to S3 
demo. Then I leave the rest as a default for the demo purpose. For the VPC, I will use my default VPC. And then multi-AZ, I will choose the Devil Tester Workload a single AZ. Then I create replication instance. It will take a, a few minutes. OK, my DMS replication instance created. Now status is available. Next, let's create AWS DMS migration task. Before creating replication task, I want to make sure my replication instance be able to connect my source endpoint and my target endpoint. So let's do the test. The first, I'll test my source endpoint. I choose my source endpoints and from action, choose test connection. Then from replication instance checklist, I'll choose my replication instance. Click run the test. Now we can see the status is successful. Next, I'll test the connection with S3 target. Go from replication instance and choose replication instance again. Click run test. We we'll use AWS Database Migration Service Console to create a database migration task. First, we will provide unique task identifier. Let's continue call ORA to S3 demo. From a replication instance list, let's choose ORA to S3 demo we just now created. Source database endpoint, we choose ORA to S3 demo. And the target database endpoint, is ORA to S3 target. For migration type, we'll use migrate existing data. On the task setting section, we'll leave all default, but uh, I will enable cloud watch logs. Let's move the table mapping sections. We'll continue to use wizard ATP mode for this. But once you get familiar, and then you can use JSON editor. For database migration service task, minimum we should have one selection rules. Click Add New Selection Rule. For schema, I will use TPCH for this demo. If I want to migrate every tables under this schema, I will leave percent character as a wild card. But for the demo, I only have one table, which is orders table. For action, I use include, but I do want to add a column filter because I want to migrate my historical data, which is 1993 year of data. For column name, I will use the order date column. For condition, I will choose equal or between two values. 19 92, January 1st, and 1993, January 1st. Then click Save. I can see my task ORA to S3 demo status is running. So far, progress migrated the data 14%. Now, status is showing load complete. Let's click Task Identifier. Going to the summary page, click Table Statistics. As we can see, we total load 2.287 for million rows. Let's use Amazon Asina to validate the full load. On Amazon Asina console, click Query Editor. I'll create Amazon as in an external table under database or a to S3 demo. This is my as in an external table or a to S3 demo definition. Notice the for row format seeder. I use parquet have seeder. That's because when I migrate the data from RDS Oracle to S3 bucket or a to S3 demo, I use the data format is parquet. Click Run Query. Query successful. My Azina 
table is created. Now let's do a data validation. I use SQL Developer connect to my source database. Remember, we migrate the data from the TPCH order table, the order date between two dates, year 1992, January 1st, and year 1993, January 1st. Let's count how much total data we should have migrated. So we should have migrated the 1.13423 file learning rows. Let's back to Azena console. From Azena console, let's query the Azena table I just now created. Run the query. As you can see, we exactly get the same records. 1.134235 mini records. The last demo, I'll show you how to use Azina Federated Query to join the table in Amazon RDS Oracle and archive the data in S3 Data Lake. To be able to use Amazon Azina Federated Query to query RDS Oracle, we needed to create a custom Azina data source connector. We can leverage to use a serverless application repository existing trains, Oracle Azina GDBC 12C. Once you click Trains Oracle Azina GDBC 12C, you come to the AWS Lambda console. On this Lambda console, you just need to follow application setting wizard to provide all the necessary information and click Deploy. You will go to CloudFormation console to create data source connector automatically for you. On CloudFormation console, we can see serverless repository joins Oracle as in a GDBC 12C stack creates complete. From ADAS Lambda console, I can see I have my function name called ORA connector. Enable Amazon Azina to communicate with database use GDBC already ready. On the Azina console, now I want to count the total order records. Currently, order table in my South RDS Oracle database, I have all records by the year 1993. Remember, we use the database migration service, migrate the 1993 records to the S3 Day Lake. After I verified the migration successful, I deleted the the records from my source database. And meanwhile, I have the Azina table and point to the S3 bucket where 1993 order records are stored. I will use the full join, join these two tables in that way. I will get all my order records. Now let's run this query. All right, we got the total records, 2.46127 million records. For detailed uh, security setup, please refer Amazon as in a federated query documentation for the details. This is a reference link used for this video. Let me give a summary for this demo. First, we show you how to set up AWS Managed Oracle Database at the source, set up Amazon S3 as a target for AWS DMS. We also create the AWS DMS to endpoints and launch an AWS DMS replication instance. We created the AWS DMS migration task, and we use Amazon Azina for the data validation we also use Amazon Azina Federated Query to join the table in Amazon RDS Oracle and the historical data in S3 daily. Thanks for watching. Happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.